On February the 7th of this year, in my state, bushfires raged through my state. And uh, they killed 173 people, these wildfires, in the worst natural disaster in, in my state. And that was reported worldwide. What people didn't see was the week that preceded what we call Black Saturday and those terrible fires. And that was seven days over 40 degrees centigrade. By the end of that week, by the time we got to the Friday, my city went into meltdown. Building systems failed. Telecommunications failed. We went within a whisker of losing the electricity grid. Public transport failed. My city is about 3.5 million, about 750,000 people a day coming to my city. If that is a vision of what I'm going to have to deal with in extreme adverse climate events in the future, then we are not ready for it, and I doubt that we ever will be. But there are some, some things that I think are, are very important in looking at how we deal with those systems failures and what we can do leading up to it. I would say that in the capital cities around Australia, there is a will to act. And, and that's where I'll come back to David Nickney and the message that I want to take to those leaders out there. We're spending quite modest amounts of money. I sometimes hear huge amounts of money. The capital cities of Australia, and my colleague, the Lord Mayor of Sydney, is here with me uh, in Copenhagen. We've done research that shows we're spending about $114 million between us all. And that will deliver the 40% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2020 in Australia's capital cities. But that is only a start. And, and they range from retrofitting projects to energy projects, the tri-generation in Sydney, to many different sorts of renewable energy projects as well. But it will deliver that reduction for us. So we're acting. And therefore, to come to the answer to your question, although Bickley has done great work here, and I hope that cities are in the final text of whatever is signed, our wonderful colleague from Dar es Salaam started us this week by saying, don't, don't worry about what they sign or whether they sign tomorrow or the next day, because they will sign. They will sign something. But his message to us was, but we're already doing. We're already doing things in our city that will have a positive effect on climate change. And that's what we've got to focus on. For me, this has been an incredibly optimistic week because in dealing with my colleagues and listening to their stories, what I will take away is not the necessity, important though it is, of a signature of world leaders on a piece of paper and an agreement, whatever that might be. What I will take away with me is the experience of my colleagues in like cities, knowing what they do, taking away what they have shown us that they are doing and putting that into effect in my city to do even better than those baselines that David commented on. That's why, in many ways, I think, I'm, I regret to tell you out here at the Bella Centre, for me the real action has been at Copenhagen uh, Town Hall under the Lord Mayor of Copenhagen, and I hope we can take away some real actions to do things, to act, not just to talk about it. Thank you.